Philip Crowther, international affiliate reporter for the Associated Press, joins us now from Las Vegas. Philip, thanks for joining us. Um, as we mentioned, former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg made his debut on the debate stage last night. Many said that he really didn't do so well. What's your take on that? No, he didn't do all too well. Uh, his campaign, though, is saying that uh, they're relatively happy with his performance and the simple fact that he hadn't been on a debate stage for a very long time did mean that he managed to find his feet in the second half of this debate. But that doesn't mean that the first half wasn't excruciating for the former mayor of New York City. He was attacked from all sides. In the end, it was Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts who got in the very first attack right off the get-go. But every candidate on stage had their go at Mike Bloomberg on all sorts of topics. Take your pick, essentially, on past racist and sexist comments. Uh, also on the simple fact that he is a billionaire like President Donald Trump. And then, maybe most importantly, these are candidates who are really unhappy with how Mike Bloomberg has been doing his campaigning, essentially. He has foregone doing any campaigning in the early states, including here in Nevada, instead concentrating entirely on spending his $400 million on TV adverts so that he can good as, get as good a result as possible on Super Tuesday on the 3rd of March. Those are the tactics used by Mike Bloomberg, and they don't really go down well with the rest of the contenders. Yeah, I mean, it really was quite the debate. The gloves, the gloves really came off. Do you expect that tone to continue in the future debates? Well, because of the the urgency that we now have in this race, I think that's probably what's going to happen. We've now had nine debates out of a total of 12. So three more to come, the next one already next week in South Carolina, when presumably these six candidates will be on stage again together. There's a reason for this tension, for this aggression on stage. First of all, uh, the Nevada caucuses are coming up on Saturday. Some of those candidates on stage, including, for example, former Vice President Joe Biden, really need to get a good result here where there's a very different demographic voting compared to Iowa and New Hampshire. And then there are national polls that keep on coming out and that show that Bernie Sanders is the front runner nationally and in many of the states that will be voting over the next few weeks, meaning that anybody who can will be trying to get a tax in. On him, though that wasn't as much the case last night, everybody was concentrating on Mike Bloomberg. That's why Bernie Sanders can be seen as one of the winners of this debate here last night. He was attacked too, but not as much as Mike Bloomberg was, meaning that he comes out of this again as a bit of a winner and still the front runner nationally and in many of the states coming up. Well, you talked about Joe Biden. We talked about him yesterday and how he really did need to make an impact. What do you think of his performance last night? Well, the feeling you get with the former vice president is that he never really quite gets going. He is, after all, the former vice president. He has campaigned many times before. He has been a presidential candidate before. He knows the debate stage, but he still doesn't have that 100 percent convincing performance. And that, again, was not the case yesterday. Sometimes he disappeared from the stage, didn't really partake uh, when everybody else might have been shouting. He was a little bit quieter than others. The reason why we look toward the former Vice President so much is because he was, after all, the clear front runner when he entered this race uh, at the very beginning. And uh, things are getting a little bit difficult for him because he had those really bad results in Iowa, a fourth place place finish there, a fifth place finish in New Hampshire. This is a state, Nevada, where he really wants to do well because of a large Latino community. And then next week in South Carolina, he truly has to do well because that is where a majority of African-American voters uh, will be having their say in the primary there. And that really is a must-win state for Joe Biden. That's why things are getting a little bit tense in his campaign and also on stage, of course. Well, Philip, thank you so much. Great to see you again. Pleasure.